Hey everyone, it's Isaiah from Very Geek. Whether or not you just see a floating head or me wearing a green shirt, that's entirely up to if I do the keying right. Uh, but yeah, so I figured I, like Avengers Endgame is coming out soon. Uh, really tomorrow, actually Thursday is a premiere night for like everyone. So I figured, why not do a list of my top ten like personal MCU movies? Now, do you guys want to see a top twenty-one list? Because I have, I do have my own like full list of all the MCU movies, right? Because I've seen all of them. So let me know what you guys think. I'm just pulling up my list right now. Uh, but yeah, for this video, we're gonna just cover the top ten, so I don't keep you guys here for too long, especially if you guys are gonna go watch it tomorrow. But yeah, this might include some minor, minor spoilers, if any at all. But let's start it off. Oh no, wait. Let's, let me just do some honorable mentions. Honorable mentions in general that I like left out are gonna be Black Panther. I, I already see some people disliking uh, the first Avenger, and to me, the Incredible Hulk. Um, the reason I say that is because Black Panther is good. It does have a lot of messy CGI and like the final fight, is, it looks god awful. And some certain, like certain story things don't make any sense, but like the set design, the music and like the culture in it, really great. Um, but I just don't think it's as high as like a Dark Knight or like an Infinity War, like a Winter Soldier in my opinion, spoiler I guess for the list, but I don't think it's nowhere near that tier that people are putting it up to be, but I think it's like a number of like, it's right there, it's at 11. And Incredible Hulk, I think it's just an underrated film that people, I feel like people feel, uh, forgot about it. I think the actual design of the Hulk in that movie was really cool in my opinion, like really sleek, really like, I know it's like more model-like rather than Hulkish, but I really like that design. Ed Norton was good in it too, and Abomination looked like crab, but I mean, the fight was really cool. And the first Avenger, I mean, it's just the first Avenger, it had a lot of heart and just, it was very, I love the World War II setting and everything, Red Skull is great going too, so. Those are just my honorable mentions. At number 10, I have The Avengers, the first one. Uh, the Avengers, I, I still think, is a great film. It's a definitely like a miracle that that film in general got, that it was even made. Like The fact that it came out in 2012 and in a climate where, sure, the MCU was popular, but it was like, the fact that The Avengers was in cinemas across the world is still, like nothing even look i love dc honestly i like dc more than marvel like comics wise but nothing is gonna capture that same feeling of seeing actual superheroes like a full-on group like of captain america iron man thor like everyone almost everyone in the and like in an avengers film in cinemas for the first time ever it's number 10 because i do think it's great still i think it's uh like it has some flaws in it, but I think the overall the chemistry and all the characters work well. The thing is, my top 10 list isn't really gonna be like, honestly like number one through 15 are all good movies and a lot of them are just like kind of interchangeable. But I just think emotionally, I got more attached to some more movies, for example, like at number nine. Honestly, I'm gonna switch it. Guardians one is number nine. So we'll get to Guardians two. Guardians is number nine because it's a great film, like I was saying before about Guardians 2, but Guardians 1 had a lackluster villain, but the fact that this movie pulled off introducing Star-Lord, Gamora, everyone, and I think the story was more coherent in part one, and more like streamlined and more like set, so I do appreciate that about number one more, but number two has a very, like a couple very hardcore moments that tug you emotionally that's why when i get to it again that's why it's gonna be minor sports i'm gonna get to it when i go to guardians 2 now that i switched them up and at number eight i have doctor strange doctor strange is a a top tier marvel movie it is visually like amazing the most visually amazing marvel movie i have seen like no doubt about it. Between all the Marvel films, Dark Doctor Strange had, has above all of those. Just in general, magicalness, like the spectral plane, different dimensions. Like when he got sent flying, when the the, the ancient one, whatever, sent him. Like that was that was amazing. That was beautiful. Um, and yeah, the the villain was a bit wonky uh, with Mads Mikkelsen. But, because he really didn't get much development aside from, he's a rogue student, then this happened, and we kind of don't even see him almost at all until the end, because it's more about, you know, obviously the hero. Um, 
But yeah, the, the Dormammu stuff was also funny too. So I rank number eight Doctor Strange. At number seven, where I had Guardians 1, I put Guardians 2. Guardians 2 had a... Man. The ending. Since I already said how great Guardians 2 was. It was a little bit more incoherent as, as opposed to Guardians 1. However, it had like hardcore emotional moments. Not only that, the main villain with... Um, God, I can't believe... Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell as the main villain really brought it. And the way they wrote him and like the connection he had with, uh, with Star-Lord and everything. And uh, you know the whole it, it was just it worked out so well and it was so messed up and so heart wrenching and then the final thing you guys know what I'm talking about Mary Poppins that like that alone like ranks like Guardians 2 hit me like at an emotional level um, and then number number six I have Spider-Man Homecoming Spider-Man Homecoming is also a great film but. Um, the only thing that bogs it down as to, uh, out of being top five to me is the too much reliance of Tony Stark. Like I know the film is basically about Peter growing out of being like relying on either the suit that Tony gave him and just being in Tony's shadow pretty much and being the true Spider-Man that he is. But I, I don't think like I feel like for the my ideal Spider-Man is like the way I see it in Spider-Man PS4 or, like in the cartoons. Is if Spider-Man does something, he needs like he usually pays for the consequences. Um, like we went with the boat. Tony came and saved him. Like I, I like that. I would have preferred if like Spidey used more of his ingenuity and more gadgets that he had. Cause the whole thing with the suit was that the suit literally said, "Oh, you have like a, like a thousand whatever web combinations," and he really only used like different like like two to like four types of like hold like. The, uh, the ship together and it, it kind of like it kind of bogged down then, then Tony comes out of nowhere and saves it and then it's like well like you know so like there's stuff with the character of like having having a story be kind of having to uh, Spidey be like kind of the side character but aside from that Tom Holland is great as Spider-Man and not only that you have a great supporting cast a great villain in Michael Keaton as well so you have that that's why Spider-Man's number number six out of 21 so at number five, I have Captain America: Civil War. Uh, this is obviously most in most people's uh, top five, but I'm putting it in my top five because, or at number five, because I think the resolution of the Civil War was a bit weak, and I didn't like the way it ended because it felt like everything that was all the discord and fighting. It really felt like at the end. Spoiler for the ending of Civil War if you haven't seen it in the past like three years, but. Literally at the end, after all this fighting, Rhodey got paralyzed, and then at the end, Cap gives Tony, like I know they're old friends or whatever, but Cap gives Tony, hey, if you need our help, after all the stuff that's happened, after all the like shit you guys have been through, you guys just had a bare, amazing fight by the way, between him, Winter Soldier, and, uh, and Tony. Um, you had all this stuff happening, and you guys had like a bare knuckle, like bloody beatdown on Tony and on like vice versa, um, you blew off like uh, uh, Bucky's hand, all this bare knuckle bloody beatdown is getting like to the point, and even like Tony's like, you don't deserve that shit, blah blah. And then it ends with, hey Tony, if you need me, here's his phone that they didn't even use in uh, Infinity War. Like I'm, I probably addressed in an Endgame if Tony even still has it, but they didn't even address the whole cell phone thing in Infinity War. Like they they did because he was about to call him, but then right when he was about to supposedly and that's when the spaceships came in and then like nothing happened so that's why I, I really don't like the idea of the ending of civil war but overall the film is a pretty much a masterpiece at that point like it's like it has humor it's very it has the Russo brothers touch the airport scene is worth money alone spider-man's introduction black panther's introduction it has civil war's top tier number five number four thor ragnarok uh, yeah, this movie is just fun. Uh, I can't really even say anything, like, bad about the film. Like, sure, you can go on the, on the, on the, die on the bridge of, uh, on the, on the hill of, it was too funny, too comedic, or whatever. But honestly, I, the, the comedic tone worked with this movie, because this movie, it was advertised as being, like, fun. Although, like, chaotic and, uh, desperate fight. It was still seen as chaotic and fun, especially with the name of Ragnarok. 
So I think that the movie really balanced it out properly and it fleshed out Thor's character more so than the other Thor movies, which is why they're not even on this list. And I like seeing more of Thor's like new grown humanity, the you know the new haircut or whatever, uh, him fighting Hela, uh, him joining with Loki was also great. The Hulk was in it. It was it was just like it was Jack Kirby's like fantasy. Like it was such an amazing film. Uh, I think it's probably like that's why I have it at number four above the War because it was just so much fun to be in that world in that movie. It was, everything was just the Colosseum fight, everyone fighting at the end in Asgard. Like everything was just like the Hulk was great too. So. So Ragnarok, the villain Hela was also good too, she wasn't bad. Uh, but yeah, so at number three, we have Iron Man. What can I say? One, the movie that started it all. Two, it's not up here because it started it all. It's up here because as a film, John Favre, as even though he didn't miss the mark with Iron Man 2, with one, it was just like it was mesmerizing. The like the fact that someone came in, in the same year the Hulk came out as well, but someone came in, took a C-tier character in Iron Man, and made a compelling story of a guy that that's very like a douche, this, this, and that, and whatever, and and a guy that wants to repent from his sins of like, he's now witnessing all the damage that he's done unintentionally with selling all these weapons and stuff and like seeing the impacts of his work and having him change and molding him in that same film i think was an amazing thing that john Favreau did and rdj was again a stroke of genius a perfect casting like he is made to be iron man as we now see um sure the uh, iron monger was a bit weak but the fights the scenes bro not Till this day, sorry if I got you guys, till this day, people still use that one gif or that one scene where he, when he dodged the, the, the missile, looked back, shot his little tiny one, turns around and then the, the, the tank blows up. People still use that scene to this day, like it was like bad ass. And like the chase scenes when like the jets are like going after him, like I want to, I want to go, I want to, I want to see this movie again. And then number, number two and number one. Number two, number one are both interchangeable to me, personally. Number two is Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier, what can I say? It's pretty much, in my opinion, a masterpiece. It's a tactical espionage spy thriller movie with, like, obviously it's not as crazy. Like, you have badass moments like Cap, like, throwing the shield, destroying the helicopter, or when he was in the, in the inside the, um, the elevator and everyone's just like, and he's just like looking at all the sweat and everyone getting clamped up and nervous, and he's just like, Last, last chance to get out, and then he just fights all of them, and he kicks up the shield, like, uh, introduction of uh, Falcon, which, uh, with, um, I forget his name, Anthony Mackie, and, like, having Scarlett Johansson, like, having, being undercover and all that, like, him getting his original, like, gear back, and, like, destroying the corruptness of the government, and breaking down everything that Cap knew about being good and being for the government. I love that it basically deconstructed Cap's idealism and gave him a whole new, which is why in the next one that I'm gonna, in my number one spot, obviously you guys know what it is at this point, but the next one I'm gonna mention is Infinity War, number one, which is why I love, even though they underused Cap in this movie, Infinity War used, it can even mention like, um, when he got up front with the general, and the general shut up and was like, oh, well, we're, you know, arrest him, blah, 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 and he, he just tried to tell him, we're done taking orders, like, you know, he's like, He's at that point now, like he, everything that he's known about being right and following the government is is out the window since a Winter Soldier. <laughs> like it's more about following what he thinks is right, what he thinks is righteous and good. Um. So all that being said, with Infinity War, uh, like like I said, I I can't really. It's pretty much self-explanatory at this point. Like Infinity War is literally one of the best Marvel films ever made. It took everything and made a Thanos movie and literally Thanos as the main villain, Josh Brolin, knocked it out of the park. Um, everyone's interactions with each other, it's Doctor Strange with Iron Man and Spider-Man and all that. Everything really melded together then when they met the Guardians and then same thing on Earth with the whole Wakanda fight and everything and then Thor's, uh, his own journey after like his getting his people massacred. And nothing is as alpha as when 
right off the bat, you see literally Loki's confidence how he's like, we have a Hulk. Hulk comes in thrashing Thanos. Rah, rah, rah. And what does Thanos do? He just chop you and he's like, oh my god. And he chops him on the neck and then just body slams him and beats the shit out of him. Like Infinity War is a one of is the culmination, part one of the culmination of everything that's been happening for the past 10 years. And it knocked it out of the park. The music, the cinematography, the CGI. Thanos is the best villain in the MCU, hands down. It is just one of the best Marvel films. That's why that's why I said Wonder Soldier and this one are like uh, neck and neck. Like that's why Wonder Soldier is honestly the best movie, like structure and everything else. But I think Infinity War is, even though it can be unbalanced at some points, pun intended. Um, it literally is a culmination of everything, and everything in it melts together so well and even the parts that kind of don't work still work because like just just being being honestly being in an avengers movie setting is entirely different than being in the like standalone movie setting so oh man i was talking for a long time anyway hope you guys enjoyed uh i'm pretty sure this people gonna be the disagreeing with my list so let me know what you guys think down below make your own give me your own top 10 my hair keeps doing this thing um let me know what are your what's your top 10 do you disagree with me do you like you know let's all be civil and like you know again this is just for fun we're just having fun until endgame comes out and yeah let me know what your top 10 is whether whether you disagree or agree with me let me know down below make sure you guys hit that like comment and share the video if you enjoyed also not that notification bell if you're subscribed already and if you're gonna subscribe subscribe and hit the notification bell uh to be notified of my, my videos daily videos and also follow me on my social media like my instagram my twitter my snapchat and i hope you all have a great night bye guys